morning guys and welcome to what I eat in a day. Today I'm going to show you three delicious meals that you can make yourself at home. So we're going to start things off with a nice bit of brekkies. We're going to do something nice and fresh, some avocado, tomato, some dill, a bit of pine nuts and a nice poached egg on top. So first things first, we need an avocado. So I'm going to mash up that avocado, get it nice and fine. I'm going to add some nice molden flaky salt, a little bit of pepper, a dash of olive oil, and then I'm going to scrape it up and pop it in a bowl. So next up we're going to get some lovely baby tomatoes, give them a good wash. Then I'm just going to cut them into quarters. Then I'm going to pop them in a bowl as well. We're going to get a red onion, and we're just going to need a slither of it because a little goes a long way. Nice and fine. Watch your fingers because I chopped a bit of my thumb off a couple of weeks ago. We're going to get a lovely chunk of dill. We're going to chop this up fine. Then next up we're going to fry some pine nuts. I'm just going to add them to the pan with no oil. You don't need anything, just give them a nice toast until they get brown. Usually it takes about four to five minutes, so just give them a constant shake. We're going to add that to the bowl. We're going to crack an egg into a bowl. Then we're going to add some boiling water on a high heat. The egg only needs a minute to a minute and a half to cook. We're going to add some vinegar, which helps keep the egg intact, a dash of salt, and a bit of pepper. Then we're going to get a whisk, and we're going to try and make a little whirlpool for the egg to drop into. This is why the bowl is important, much easier to put in. Carefully drop the egg in, and then let the magic happen. Look at that. Nice little egg there for you. Alright, and now let's plate it up, add some toast. Then I'm going to get the avocado mix, add it on top. I'm going to wipe the sides a little bit to make the presentation better for you guys. Then I'm going to add tomatoes. Then I'm going to get some lovely feta pine nuts. Pop some dill on top. Love a bit of dill. To finish things off, a bit of poached egg. Look at that. Brekkies is served. Mmm. This is good. Obviously I'd say that anyway just to impress you guys, but the feta adds a nice bit of punch. The dill just gives it, oh, it just elevates it, guys. It is delicious. You gotta start your day off right, you know? Get a nice health inside you, get a nice bit of taste, and then you're good to go. Now it is lunchtime, and I'm gonna make buffalo cauliflower wings. Since I gave up eating meat, I've always missed and craved like good buffalo wings, and this hits the spot. You need the cauliflower, and we're gonna chop it up into wings down the middle to start with, and then you just pick off each floret, if you will. We'll give it a good wash, then we're gonna get a bowl, and then add half a cup of almond flour, then half a cup of oat milk. You can use normal milk, you can use almond milk. Then some paprika, you want about a teaspoon. I mean, I like to just throw it in, and I'm someone that just likes to eyeball it. Then you want two teaspoons of garlic powder. Again, I'm just gonna throw it in, add some lovely molden salt, nice bit of pepper, Look at that. Then we get a nice whisk and give it a good mix up. Then we got a freshly washed cauliflower and give it a good old mix. Look at this. Right, then I'm gonna preheat the oven to 450 degrees, add parchment paper. Then add the cauliflower. It looks good. Then we throw it in the oven for 20 minutes. So while that's cooking in the oven, we're gonna make the sauce now, which we'll baste on top. I'm gonna to melt some butter. You don't need butter, but Jen's at jury duty today and I'm on my own, so I'm gonna treat myself. Then I'm gonna use this buffalo wing sauce. This stuff is amazing. You need a quarter cup, but again, I'm just gonna wing it. See what I did there? Add that in. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of lemon juice. Just give it a little bit of a zest, you know, freshen it up. Let's prepare the veg. We've got some celery, we've got some carrots. Give it a good old wash. So I'm gonna shave the dirty bits off the carrots. And this is basically what we're gonna be dipping into the ranch and to the buffalo. So you wanna make it, you know, sort of dippable shapes, if you will. Set the carrots aside, put the celery. I'm very scared of cutting things using a knife now because I chopped off some of my thumb using a mandolin, which was not ideal. Very, very, very painful. And I thought I was gonna have a chunk of my thumb missing forever, but it seems like it's growing back a little bit. This is exactly what you wanna listen to while getting hungry. Celery is done. Oh, I'm excited. Right, so now the timer is done. Let's have a look. Wow. 
So what you want to do is give them a little mix, looking lovely. So then we're going to get our pre-made buffalo sauce, bit of lemon and a cheeky bit of butter. And just base it on each cauliflower. Simple as that. There's something quite relaxing about doing this. It's like you're painting food and you get to eat it, so everybody wins. Although I'm not a very good painter but I'm good at eating. Again, give them a little mix around. Now that has been basted, we're gonna put it back in the oven for another 15 to 20 minutes, then we're good. And then next we're gonna add the sauce, a nice bit of ranch, or ranch, as some of you guys will say. This is lovely, and we got the light version. Again, healthy guys, you know, I'm looking out for you. Right, so it's been about 20 minutes, let's have a look. Oh yeah, that looks good. So now we have the buffalo cauliflower looking beautiful. Let's plate it. First we put the carrots down, put our celery, our lovely ranch, the leftover buffalo sauce, and then we add our cauliflower. And there you have it, lunch is served. Look at this, the presentation's great, right? Just makes it look nicer, taste nicer. Good thing about cauliflower, it's got, it's got a good amount of protein in it as well, so uh, you're not losing it from not having the meat. Mmm, that's good. Right, I'm gonna keep eating. See you guys in a bit. Welcome to dinner. Tonight I'm going to make a mushroom white sauce spaghetti with a little bit of truffle salt. Something I've been making for a while. It's delicious, it's not too naughty. We're gonna need some mushrooms, bit of that. We're gonna chop them up quite fine, pop them in the bowl. We're gonna use four cloves of garlic and we're gonna chop them up quite fine. Fun fact, this was the exact dish I was making a couple of weeks ago when I cut my thumb. So it's bringing back some tough memories, but we're gonna make new, better memories, you know? That's all we can do. See, now I've said it, you're watching my fingers, aren't you? Garlic is good. We're gonna get a frying pan and fry these mushrooms. Add a nice bit of olive oil, add the mushrooms. So we'll fry these for about five minutes until they get a nicely golden brown. Jen's gonna be back from jury duty in a bit. So this will be a nice little din-din surprise for her. So now we're gonna cook our spaghetti. I would usually do fettuccine, but I don't have any and sorry guys, but spaghetti does the job. It's just a different shape, isn't it? And then add boiling water. You know how to do spaghetti. If you don't, you need to cook more. Cheeky bit of salt. So now I'm gonna add garlic. You only want to cook the garlic for about two minutes. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of cream cheese. Then we're gonna get some sour cream and we need a quarter cup of that. And then we're gonna get about a quarter cup of the starchy pasta water. Oh, I'm getting so excited. So next we wanna add some salt and some pepper. Now we're gonna add some Parmesan in Jen's favorite device. The thing is great, I must say. While that's simmering, we are gonna get a zucchini and we're gonna do thin slices for a nice garnish on top. Fun fact number two, this was the exact thing I was doing when I chopped my thumb. Which is why I'm not using a mandolin and I'm using a fork. And then we're gonna add this to the sauce and then fry for about two minutes. And now add the spaghetti and we give it a good old mix. Taste test time. You know this is a very important part of the process. Mm. So now for some truffle sole. I know truffle's pretty fancy, but it's actually quite affordable this. And you only need a pinch, but it goes a long way. Right, now to serve this. Wow. We, we have a special guest here. You might know her from such channels as this one. <laughs> um, welcome back, babe. Now you can relax, all right? Cheers. Cheers. I'm very happy about this break. <laughs> Thank you. Mm hmm. Mmm. Mm. It's definitely like a redeeming the last time you try to make it. Well guys, we're gonna uh, continue to eat this, but thank you for tuning in for a very, very special episode. And uh, we'll see you guys in her next one. Bye guys. <laughs>